Please welcome the co-authors of this marvelous book called The Dream King, Will Ford and Matt Lockett. Will, great having you guys here. Thank you so much for being here. How did you meet? How did that happen? Well, we had a chance encounter at a prayer meeting on MLK Celebration Day at the Lincoln Memorial. I was led there because of a dream that I had about Martin Luther King, and, uh, and Matt was led there because of a dream that he had yeah. uh, as well. So Now, when did you just bump into each other and start talking, and the next thing you know, you become friends? I mean, that, that sounds a little weird. It wasn't well, quite like that. I didn't even really know why I was there. I was on this journey trying to figure out what God was doing in my life, hmm. and I found myself in this prayer meeting and uh, spent the day praying with a group of people there at the Lincoln Memorial, but that night I heard a story uh, as Will shared uh, the history of his family, and it, it was really moving, and it really kind of brought things together for me. Yeah. And at that time, Matt, did you know that your ancestors had actually been slave owners? Were you aware of that then, or did it take some time? Not specifically. Yeah. You know, I, for me, our family, we never really knew where we came from, and so we, did, we couldn't get beyond my dad's grandfather. So my dad would make a joke out of it and just say, I guess we're just a bunch of mutts from Kentucky. Right. You know, but we didn't have any idea what our family history was. And, and what about you, Will? Because I, I think one of the fascinating stories is the story, and it involves something we have on our stage, this massive black kettle that comes from your family. How old is that kettle? It's about 200 years old. Uh, Colonial Williamsburg looked at it and get, get, put it about 1834. Yeah. And it's been passed down about seven generations in my family. And the reason why it was passed down, it was used for cooking, it was used for washing clothes, but secretly, it was used for prayer. See, that's the, when I read that in the book, and that's mm -hmm. why I tell people, you gotta read this book, because it is a gut punch of a book. When you say that was used for prayer, I mean, my first thought is, how in the world is a kettle <laughs> right. used for prayer? Right. Yeah. Well, they had, on, the, on this particular plantation in Lake Providence, Louisiana, they were beaten for any reason, and, pray, and praying was one of them. So, to keep their prayer meeting secret, they would go into a barn late at night to make sure their prayer meeting wasn't seen. But to make sure it wasn't heard, they would go in there with that pot. They would use that very pot, and they would take it and invert it. They would turn it upside down, and then prop it up with rocks so it would be suspended off the ground about an inch or two. They would then lay flat on the ground, or prostrate themselves on the ground, and put their lips in between the opening between the ground and the kettle, so that the kettle muffled their voices as they prayed through the night. And the story they passed down with the pot is this, is that those people who were praying didn't think they would see freedom in their time, so they prayed for the freedom of their children in the next generation. And they, they prayed a prayer that God heard. The two of you sit here, yep. white man, black man, their prayers were answered, and you have experienced something that they never, ever could have imagined, Lake Providence, Louisiana. You have freedom. And, and, and the amazing thing is that over, over your family, I mean, this is just the pot that's in our family that they were just using to muffle their voices, but literally in every family, over every person's life, there's a prayer bowl. Revelation 5 and 8 says, there are prayer bowls in heaven full of incense, mm -hmm. which are the prayers of the saints. Listen, there's a prayer bowl over every family. There's a prayer bowl over every community. There's a prayer bowl over every nation. God is looking for a new generation mm. to resource the prayer bowls. The reason why I said it is because there was a godly remnant, and not just black Christian slaves, but also white Christian abolitionists who prayed into being the first and the second great awakening. Had it not been for those revivals, slavery would have not ended in this nation. So it was more of a spiritual reason, not a political reason, right. that ultimately slavery ended in the, the U.S. is what you're saying. Yeah, transformed hearts, transformed laws, and that's what brought the demise of slavery. Right. Matt, we're in a, a time of incredible tension in this country, and, you know, I, I thought things were getting better and better and better in race relations, and then it seems like over the past 10 years, it's gone the other way, and I don't know that I understand it. What do we do to turn that around? Well, for me... I can only speak of kind of the journey that I've been on, and that was to uh, be obedient to God and, and show up at a prayer meeting when he tells you to go to the <laughs> prayer meeting. You know, I literally met this man in a prayer meeting, and you know, we, we struck up a friendship and a, a partnership that began to develop over time. And so we actually spent the next decade praying together. I got to know him. He wasn't just a, you know, he wasn't just a, a concept to me. I, I got to know this man, I love his family, he grew to love my family, and we just became friends and then prayed together for about a decade. Yep. And then something happened after about 10 years of prayer. We actually made this amazing discovery where 
We found out where my family came from. We actually came in as settlers through Virginia. Yeah. But not only that, we found out that the last battle of the American Civil War took place in my family's front yard. The house is still there. It's been preserved. It's still riddled in bullet holes. And there's a historical marker in the front yard that says, here Lee fought his last battle. And that led to something else. And so we did more, just stumbled on more research. And what we found out is Matt's family is the family that owned my family, where that kettle pot came from. So think about it. Here's my His family, family yes. Yes. owned That's right. your family. Yes. So think about it. Here's wow. my family praying for the ending of slavery underneath this kettle pot. And all the way up at the farmhouse of, you, of the people used to own them, slavery comes to the end in their front yard. Mm. But then because he's the God of the past and the future, he connects two people from the same family lines yeah. together to war against injustice in their day and to cry out for awakening in our time. And that's that not being done yeah. together. Unbelievable. <laughs> the story is in this wonderful book, The Dream King. You talk about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s mm -hmm. wonderful influence on your lives, on this country. Uh, he had a dream. Right. You guys are helping to fulfill it. This is an inspiring book, and it's one that I believe all Americans would be blessed to read. The Dream King is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can also visit dreamstreamcompany.com where you can get the book, read their blog, ask them to speak in your town. I, I think you probably are saying, I'd like to see that. That's dreamstreamcompany.com. I hope you will get the book and invite them.